I asked over 200,000 people if they could go back in time and tell themselves one thing to improve at Dota, what would it be? Then I sifted through every response and gathered the best ones for this video. Among the responses were advice from an 11k MMR player, tips from a literal TI winner, and also memes. Lots of memes. Anyway, let's get right into it. Get rest instead of finding another match when you are tired as fuck. Our boy Jerry here, he's right. First off, if you're tired, a lot of the time it's because it's late at night. And if it's late, then guess who you're queuing into? A bunch of psychopaths who have been binge queuing and losing all night. Not good. Another reason that you should avoid queuing while tired is science. This study right here, it showed that very tired drivers have 150 milliseconds slower reaction time than well-rested drivers. Take the ping that you have to the closest server available to you to play Dota 2 and then add 150 to it. Basically, move to Antarctica. That's you if you queue while you're tired. You're basically a penguin queuing from Antarctica. Trust me, you are a better offlaner. I'm from the future. Good advice. The roles in Dota 2 are unique. Fives are sacrificial. Carries, on the other hand, are calculated. So, if you're like me and you are a relatively uncalculated person, here's what can happen. You get bored, run at the enemies, die once, and then never end up recovering and your team reports you. But don't sweat it. If you're an offlaner and do this exact same thing, it's space. So then, I ask, why torture your MMR and your mental health by playing carry and getting the shit flamed out of you? Test out all of the roles and see if one fits you better. But all Alpine sets on Valve store for $5. Fernando, he's got his priorities straight. Eat Mro Beans, another man with very solid priorities. I would buy an account and learn from higher tier players. Okay, well, to a degree, that's not that bad. Celery, who recently hit 11k MMR and is the captain of a top 2 DPC team, gave the following advice. Play a few heroes at a time so you can actually focus on improving your gameplay instead of trying to use the spells of every hero properly. Probably the coolest thing about this game is that you can basically play anything and make it work if you're good enough. Everything can work. Why? Well, the TLDR is that Dota is balanced based on every hero being overpowered in some way. And there are so many items in the game that any weakness a hero may have can be remedied. So, the reason that many pros, including Celery here, recommend that you only spam one hero is that it lets you learn the big picture concepts in the game first and foremost. And this is simply because you'll get so used to the hero's mechanics that they'll become muscle memory, they'll honestly become boring to you. To give you a really concrete example, if you are playing a bunch of different heroes, you may be so focused on relearning each hero's attack animation that you miss a bunch of last hits on the first few waves. And if that happens, you'll always play lanes starting with a disadvantage, and so you'll never learn how to consistently crush lanes. And it might not sound like a big deal, but this is a super important skill to know, because sometimes your lane is supposed to snowball. So, if you haven't done it yet, then I would highly recommend spamming one hero for 20 games in a row. I guarantee you that you will be surprised by how many lessons that you're learning that were right under your nose the whole time. Play Pudge, best hero in Dota. Play Techies and Pudge only. Don't play Pudge. One of these people is right. Just let spells rip sometimes. Better to get a two-man echo that snowballs into tower, than try and wait for the perfect one and end up losing the fight. If all you care about is cool spell casting to make an epic teamfight montage, then sure, go for it. Go for that five-man echo slam. It's a video game after all, it's supposed to be fun. But, if you care about winning, you should be assessing what is the simplest path that you can take to win the game. And, most of the time, a two-man echo is all that's necessary to win fights. Because then you kill two guys, and even if you die in the process, you leave your team with a 4 versus 3, which is advantageous. Stop spamming Kunkka while listening to sea shanties, you moron. Uh, Gotta say, I hard disagree on this one. TI winner Aoi10000 said the following, Dota is about pattern recognition, and mistakes are chances to develop that and improve. This confused me because I'm stupid, so I asked him to elaborate, then he said, In Dota, there's a lot going on, but the fact that there's a lot going on means that you need to rely on pattern recognition. And then it made me remember this conversation that we had at the Animager where he was actually explaining this concept to me, 
Basically, what he means is that there is a shitload of stuff going on in Dota in not enough time to manually calculate your every move. So, instead, you need to rely on instincts and patterns. For example, if the map is like this, and the enemy team doesn't hit creep waves for 30 seconds, they're either killing this guy, or smoked and killing your carry. Why? Because 30 seconds is plenty of time to clear all of these camps. So, unless the entire enemy team went simultaneously AFK, they're going to hit the lane creeps, unless they are doing something else, like killing your carry or killing Roshan. If you're watching a game as a spectator, this sort of thing seems really obvious, because you get to watch the enemies literally walk into Roche. But if you're actually in the game playing, you don't have that information. So you have to deduce moves like this using patterns instead. And that brings me to the second part of what Aoi said. Mistakes are chances to improve. If you make a mistake and care about improving, don't blame your team, don't blame RNG or whatever you feel like you want to blame. Look at the game state prior to the mistake and see if there is a pattern that you can recognize in the future to know that things are about to go horribly wrong. Mute everyone. Mute everyone. Mute everyone. Yes. This was the most common suggestion, by far, and no doubt it is very good advice. One of the biggest lies that you can tell yourself is that you don't care and that you don't need to mute toxic people. And my response to that is, why? What is the point in leaving an asshole unmuted? Probably the biggest counter argument that people make here is that what happens if you mute a guy and then he says something like, I'm going to Roche or I'm going high ground, something that's important to the game that you want to know. And here is where I compliment the shit out of the Dota 2 developers. Dota 2 has one of the best in-game ping systems around. You can play Dota with someone who doesn't speak a word of your native language and still know exactly what their every move is going to be. Even if that move is stealing all of your CS, all of that can still be communicated through the pings. So, if someone is speaking the language of asshole, mute them and let the pings do the talking. As the Japanese fisherman said, never give up. Genuinely good advice. If you play 20 games of Dota, on average, 8 of them you'll stomp, 8 of them you'll get stomped, and in 4 of them they'll be close. Or, at least, that's what people would have you think. Those 8 games where you get stomped are often portrayed as unwinnable. But this is not the case. It hasn't been the case for a long time. As things currently stand in Dota, it is surprisingly easy to just rush down mid and late game and throne the enemies. Hell, I'm sure I don't even need to tell you that, do I? Most Dota players are traumatized by these games when they're the ones getting throned. So then, why play as if you can't be the one throning? Turn around some of these games and you'll climb MMR at a Gaben level speed. Watch more BSJ Keck W. Don't watch BSJ. Fucking dog shit.